It's out, it's out, it's out. We got the newest chapter of Berserk that just came out today. I think it was, what, chapter 348? It's, it's a heartbreaking one. It kind of broke my heart a bit. So let's kind of go into it. So of course, if you haven't read any of the other Berserk titles, I would highly recommend that you do so before you watch this video, just because we're gonna be going into some spoilers. So I hope if you're watching this video, you know everything that's gonna be going on. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna come back from last year, what we were doing. Uh, we're basically, we talked to uh, the Fairy King. We're gonna delve into Casca's mind. We've never done this before in the history of the series. This is brand new. We're actually taking a gander inside the mind of Casca through the eyes of Farnese and Shirake. So everyone else is already at, um, at home base and Shirake and Farnese are gonna be delving into there. So we start the chapter with the solar, solar eclipse. So we kind of go into it, we kind of see that this series is a little bit barren. As they call it, it's a gloomy waste lit by a black sun. It's it's already gleamy, depressed, and that's pretty much what we're going at. They're just slowly exploring what this place actually is. We don't know too much about it. So then off in the distance, we see both of them kind of um, looking at this dog thing, carrying a coffin, I guess you could say. But yeah, as we kind of look into it, we kind of see this dog that that's pierced with a bunch of spears and has a chain tethered to his neck, pulling a coffin and already, automatically, we can tell that the, the coffin already has, um, has the banner of the hawk symbol. It's, we can already tell that this one's it's gonna delve in pretty hard. Um, Shirake kind of points out what the features of this dog has and we already tell that the, the dog doesn't have its, uh, its left paw or its left arm and we already know that dreams are the personification of what we truly feel inside and the the dog is guts without a doubt it without a doubt about it that's, that's for sure you can already tell the dog is very um anxious it's very protective guarding it's 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 in a state of shock in a sense it's just slowly feeling like it's the only person that can tether this coffin together and out in the distance, we see a couple of um, black-winded creatures right here, kind of going after the, um, Guts, I guess you could say. Pretty much Guts is very protective of the coffin. Um, they kind of strike at it. They, they keep striking spears into Guts' uh, body. And Guts, of course, is retaliating with, with anger like he always does. So that's a little nice uh, a tribulation to what he's actually doing. So, of course, naturally, uh, Farnese and Shirake are a little concerned for the hound so they're gonna rescue him and try to make sure they safe and protected so they kind of come up to uh to the hound they kind of take off the spears and everything shirike helps them out so we can already tell that the hound is not really being overprotective against shirike and farnese they're actually um he's actually appreciative of them helping him out so we're starting to look at the collar and we could already see the brand of sacrifice right there so definitely shirike points out this hound is guts this hound is cuts. It, it, it gets a lot worse from here, too. Every time we actually see the hound, uh, we can already see it in a very depressed, scared, and somewhat burdened state. And naturally, that's how Guts always is. Farnese and Shirake point out that the coffin is very heavy. They, they start to open up the coffin with the band of the hawk crest on top. And th this is kind of where it, it breaks my heart. It, it really does. Automatically, we see a doll of Casca. It's, it's a broken, tattered doll, porcelain doll of Casca. And like I said, this is a personification of her dreams. Um, she feels, Casca feels like she's already broken. We're already coming to a couple of illusions here. We, this chapter is really huge because we could automatically tell that Casca is completely aware of her surroundings. We haven't had any really indication of Casca being very intellectual in that sense, but right here, this right here, I think is proof enough to show that Casca knows exactly what's going on. She knows the burden that she is putting on top of Guts, even though she doesn't feel she's doing it on purpose, but it's a huge burden nonetheless. Kirike and Farnese here, they don't know anything about Guts' past. They don't know why Casca is the way she is. They know nothing of the Eclipse. So they're slowly discovering of the actual uh, doll and of course we see the brand of sacrifice on her on her left breast like like Casca has as well and this is what really breaks my heart is that as soon as they pretty much open the coffin you know guts is howling 
to to the to this guy just you can see how much anguish and pain he's in and I honestly think this is one of the most important chapters we've ever gotten in a very long time. Moira did something really interesting with this. Uh, usually when we see dream sequences, it kind of attributes to a lot of emotions and such like that. But this is the first time in this series, not only do we know what Casca is thinking, we, we truly know what Guts is feeling inside of his heart. Through physical manifestation, we've never received that before. And to actually see, it's, it's fucking difficult, man. Oh my god. As soon as... I'm not gonna lie, as soon as I read this chapter, I, it kind of broke me down. It's it's hard. It's it's definitely hard to read this one. At least for me, it was. Already in the doll, we can see a little tiny little creature. And it's a little tiny person. And of course, it's it's little mini Casca. It's really adorable, cute Casca. But it's the smallest fragmentation of Casca. So we already know what this means. Casca feels broken. She has no sense of awareness. Or, I'm sorry, not of awareness. But no sense of self of her identity anymore. She's just this. She's 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 a cascara. That's that's what casca means. She's she's a shell, definitely. She's a potato, but she knows what's going on. Honestly, this is a hard chapter to read. The uh, Farnese and Shirake are trying to protect her, and um, the mini casca is exhibiting features that the that the regular casca would would fare, and. They know that uh, she is incredibly fragile. Pretty much the wind can pick her up and just take her away. To actually see this is... It's, it's horrible. So Guts, of course, is standing guard right there. He's not retaliating against Shirake and, and Farnese. So pretty much they start to slowly venture into the darkness. And we slowly start to venture in to the mind of Casca. Already though, this it's a really powerful chapter. We haven't gotten any progress like this in a long time. And of course, last, it says continues in late April, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be around the 20th, 21st, somewhere around there. Pretty much the world always comes out and then everything else follows in between. Oh my God, this was, this was a hard chapter. At least for me, this is a very hard chapter, but I think it was worth the wait. We've never seen anything like this before in the history of Berserk. Usually we, we kind of see the stories of Guts and all the characters for, for who they are. But this is the first time in the series Mura has actually taken the emotions and personifications. He's put them in a dream sequence and we're actually seeing these characters, how they really feel inside. It's, it's heartbreaking. It, it, it completely broke my heart. This was a beautiful chapter. I, I'm very happy for the wait. I, I can't be ecstatic enough. Well, of course, thank you guys so much for looking at the video. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you are interested, I do other Berserk content as well. Um, I, of course, I already released a video of the Figma today. Um, I, I did a video for the PS2 uh, review of Berserk as well as the Dreamcast version. And of course, this guy right here. I'm gonna be doing a video on him just in a bit. He's, he's, my, pri he's my peace and my pride and joy. I, I'll definitely show you guys what he is up close. So, thank you guys so much for the support, especially you Berserk fans. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.